Hi, I'm Judy, and welcome to today's Posture and Back Resilience class. Um, today we're going to keep iterating on some of the exercises we've done uh, from earlier this month and make this a little bit more of a challenging workout. You might even break a little bit more sweat, and maybe your heart rate will go up a little bit. Um, if there's anything that you're not comfortable doing, try to remember or refer to some of the um, exercises that are very similar from the earlier workouts. And in this live class recording, I'll also try to offer um, some alternatives as well. Um, so before we get started, let's just go over some of the equipment that we need. We need an exercise mat. For one of the exercises, we'll also need a wall that you can lean on. Ideally, you would have yoga blocks. And, um, you know, either towels, two towels, or these floor gliders today. I'll actually demonstrate how these work. I've used towels in prior uh, exercises, uh, workouts to show you. This time I'll show you that. You will need two dumbbells or water bottles, something like that. Okay. Light is okay. And then optional are a loop band and a yoga strap and a Pilates ball. Okay. The, these last three things are very optional. First, we're going to start with some breathing warm-up exercises. The first one will be a plie overhead reach breath. So we're gonna inhale overhead as we do a plie squat and exhale as we do a plie squat down. Five of these, inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Two more, inhale up and exhale down. Last one, inhale and exhale. Very good. Okay, the next exercise is going to seem a little bit easy, but it's actually more challenging than it appears to be once you try it. So we're going to do slow eccentric marches. What does that mean? We're going to lift our knee up and then very slowly lower the foot to the ground. <laughs> I see some people wobbling. Yeah, and then so we're gonna alternate each side, just 10 on each leg, and you should start to feel your abs engage, and this is what we call eccentric motion, so when you're trying to resist um, or using your muscles the opposite way that they usually do the work, yeah? So this is almost like reverse climbing or the opposite of climbing upstairs, right? So this is three and three, good. Really good balance exercise, and four, Good control, yes, and four. I see we have dancers among us. <laughs> and five, good. So on the way up, you can lift it pretty fast. It's more about the lowering it down. So I'm gonna do that a little faster just to save time. Five more on each side, five. Uh-huh, and five. Good, oops over there, four, uh-huh, four. and four, three, and three, good, two, so you really should be feeling the lower abs firing up hopefully by now, two, and one, And one. Very nice work. Okay, just roll the shoulders out in case any tension um, accumulated there. Next, we're going to do some Pilates breaths. We've done these, but we're going to do the standing this time instead of sitting. So go ahead and take a athletic stance, so soft knees. Okay, and you can just place your hands gently on your belly button. All right, I'll do this sideways too so that you can see kind of how my breath is working. So just take a nice deep breath in and then exhale it out, drawing your abs in. And then now 10 birthday candles as you exhale. Nine and 10. Good. Relax. We're going to do two more sets of those, two more sets of 10. Inhale and then exhale, bring the abs in. And then 10 birthday candles from here. Good, inhale and exhale. 10 more birthday candles from here. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, and one. Very good. Next, we'll do the twisted breath. Again, this time we'll do it standing. Last time we did it seated. So take an athletic stand, soft knees. Hands will, fingertips will cup the shoulders. And we're going to do 30 on each side. Each time you reach the end of your range of motion, you're going to do one of those birthday candle exhales. Okay, so 30 on each side. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, a little faster, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, good job keeping your hips still, and 20, even faster, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, very nice. Next, we're going to move into some mobility exercises. We'll come down onto the ground. So for this workout, we actually have two sets of mobility exercises. These ones we'll do before the muscular activation and strengthening exercises, and then we'll have some more advanced mobility exercises after that once we're more warmed up and our muscles can kind of take more. So the first mobility exercise we'll do is a bird dog with a quad stretch. So this is some balance required. If this is too much for your shoulders, I will offer another alternative. But you start in a tabletop position, reach your arms forward, and one arm forward and the other leg back, and then you're gonna grab a hold of that foot and then stretch that quad for that bent knee as you're doing this. If this is not okay for your shoulder, then you can just do a regular quad stretch, maybe balancing on one foot. Good, holding this for three breaths here, and then we'll release that, and then same thing on the other side. Starting in a bird dog, keeping the hips level, and then bring the heel towards your seat. Abs are tight. I noticed some ex hyperextension in my elbow, so I'm gonna fix that here. Good. And relax out of that. Very nice. The next stretch is going to be a gate pose into an upright kneel. So if you have a yoga block, it's a nice to have, you can use it. It's not a huge deal if you don't. Okay, so we'll set up in a gate pose. We've done this a few times now this month, just like so, Roll, shoulder rolls back. Nice long line axial extension here. And then we're going to use our abs on your right side to come up and then slight lean over. Okay, we'll do two more on this side three times total, so gate pose, and then upright kneel. One more time, gate pose, and upright kneel. Beautiful. Okay, let's do the other side. Same setup, wrist, knee, and heel all in the same line for a gate pose. Shoulder rolls down, no hyperextension, and then three of these as we reach over. Let's try not to put any sideways pressure on that knee. And then here's number two, gate pose and upright kneel. And then last one. Very nice, very graceful everybody, great. Okay, from here we will, again, if you have yoga blocks, I know not everyone does, but if you have them, let's set them here. We're going to do a sun salutation, just one, into some different forms of hip stretches. Okay, again, tight hips are tend to impinge or impede our good posture, so that's why we're doing a series of them here. Okay, so starting at the edge of, at the front of your mat, if you have one, inhale your arms overhead, and then exhale, forward fold. Feel the stretch in your hamstrings. Inhale halfway up, flat back. Feel the axial extension of your spine as you do so. And then exhale, plant your hands on the mat or on the blocks and step back into a low lunge. The back knee can be down. Good, and first just take this stretch here, our normal hip flexor stretch. Okay, and then you're going to take your hands on the inside of that foot. You might heel toe that front foot out to the side a little bit. Rotate the toe out 45 degrees, come onto the outer blade of that foot, 
aim your hips forward, and finally turn your torso towards that front knee. So you should, if this is tight right here for the outer hip, then you should feel a stretch there. It's sort of like a modified pigeon pose. Good. And then from here, we're going to slide the back knee forward until we can come up 90 degrees with both knees. And then whichever leg is in front, that's the arm that you're going to raise and then lean over to the opposite side. So from that, this looks like this. Okay. And then same thing, other side. Good. Okay. And then now we're just simply going to switch our legs and step into a low lunge first. I demonstrated that side first so that you could see what's going on. Okay. And then take your hands on the inside of that foot, turn the front foot out 45 degrees. Sorry, it's hard to see behind my blocks. And then come onto the outer blade, lean the hips forward, turn the torso towards that front leg, and then feel that stretch on the outer hip. Good. And then coming out of that stretch, bringing the back knee forward until you can come into 90-90 with the knees. Good, and then the same leg that's forward, raise your arm up, and then lean to the side. A little bit of balance here, not to topple over. Don't worry, <laughs> we're gonna do both arms. Yeah, and then up, and then over. Good. That looks great, okay. Next up, we have our reverse tabletop. We did this last time. Again, if this is not good for your shoulders, you can just do this. Um, if you're okay with doing it, just looks like this, holding it for five breaths. Okay, inhaling and exhaling. Two, and exhale, good. If you're doing the full version, think about squeezing your shoulder blades towards each other, and that will really open up the chest and the front of the shoulders. And use your glutes to lift, and you should feel a stretch in the front of the hips, the hip flexors. Great. And that concludes the first part of our mobility workout. Next, we're going to move into some of our muscle act mus muscular activation and strengthening exercises. So the first one will be Frankenstein's, but with a couple of different versions to make it a little bit harder. You can always do the same versions that we did last time to make it a little easier, okay? So the versions that we're gonna do that today involve first using a dumbbell, but all the versions have in common the bent knees. Okay, so by using the dumbbell, it's actually going to make it a little bit easier depending on how heavy this is. Um, the heavier it is without bothering your shoulder, the easier this will be. So you're gonna exhale, roll down, inhale at the bottom, and then exhale, roll up. Good, we're going to do 10 total of these. I'm going to demonstrate a few different uh, variations, but we'll do a few more with the dumbbell here. Exhale down, inhale to the bottom, exhale up. Good, sit up nice and tall. And here's number three, exhale down, inhale at the bottom, exhale up. Very good, yeah, taking all the momentum out of that. So that was pretty easy for you. You can feel free to drop off the dumbbell and maybe try the other version. Here's number Four, exhaling down, arms reaching forward without the dumbbell. And inhaling at the bottom, exhale, come on up. Good. And number five here, exhale down. Inhale at the bottom. And exhale, slow roll up. Good. Number six, exhale, rolling down. Resisting gravity. Inhale at the bottom, exhale, roll up. Good, and then now, if you want to try an even harder version for the next last four, you can cross your fingertips over your shoulders or grab opposite elbows. This is slightly easier than this, okay? And we'll do four more, whichever version you want. So I'll do two like this, two like this. Okay, exhale, down. Inhale at the bottom, and exhale, roll up. Good and inhale at the top, exhale, roll down. So you can kind of figure out which version is right for you. We have so many options with this. Exhale, roll up. 
Okay, I have a feeling this is gonna be hard for me too, so this is gonna be interesting. Inhale and exhale. Life is all about risks, right? <laughs> Inhale and exhale. Barely made it, but we made it. Good. Inhale and then exhale, roll down. Good. Inhale at the bottom and exhale. Roll on up. Great work. Okay, so you would do 10 of those, um, whichever versions you choose. Next we'll do the genie. Okay, you have options here too. Um, if you want a harder version, you're going to hold on to a dumbbell at your chest. If this is new to you, uh, you can just you know, kind of hold your hands here or even here. This will make it easier, similar to the Frankenstein in terms of displacing your weight. So what you're going to do, you're going to keep your torso from the tip of your head to the knees completely straight by using your abs and you're not going to back bend or anything like that. So everything is braced. Okay, you're going to inhale and then exhale. Lean back. You should feel your quads stretch and burn at the same time and then come on up. Good, we'll do 15 of these. Two and up. Here's three and up. Great form. Yeah, really use those abs though. Five and up. Six and up. Here's seven. Yeah, if you want to get a little, here's eight, if you want to experiment a little, you can always try going a little slower, trying to get a little further down without collapsing, nine, yeah, and 10, but keep your head looking forward, yeah, don't look up, uh-huh, five more, five, yeah, there you go, four, and three, two, and last one. Great work. Okay, so you should feel that, yeah? Next, we have something that we don't need any equipment for. These are called partial get-ups. And we've talked a lot about getting up and down from the ground. So this is part and parcel of that. So let's start with your left leg straight and your right knee bent, right arm raised above your head. And you're gonna lay all the way down Okay, and then you're gonna use your ab muscles and you can kind of use your arm a little bit to help you sit up from there, keep this right arm raised. Yeah, and then you're gonna brace this arm here. Again, if your shoulder is not um, su super sturdy for this, then just do this sitting up part, ignore the rest of this. If you're okay to do the rest of it, go ahead and come onto the outer blade of that left foot and then you're gonna push up into a partial side plank. Good. And then you're going to come on down all the way, five on each side. So four more on this side, up, and then up, good, and down, three more on this side. And you know, everyone's a little bit different on each side, so maybe if the shoulder is not good on this side, maybe it's okay on the other. So you could always try on the side that's more sturdy. Good. One more time on this side. Good, up, and down, good. Next week we're actually going to iterate on this and instead of doing the half get up, we're gonna do the full get up. It's gonna be very exciting. Okay, so same thing, five on this side. So up, and then onto the outer blade of the right foot this time, lift the hips, and then down. Good, four more of these, good. And just the work of sitting up is even if you don't come up into this half plank, is work, you know? You did all those Frankensteins earlier, so that is worthy of doing. Good. Couple more. And last one. Great. Excellent work. So for our fourth exercise, we're going to do a bear walk with dumbbell rows. So if you have dumbbells, let's grab them and put them at the front of your mat. You'll want them pretty close together. Okay, so you have options. The full version of this as a bear crawl is 
coming into a tabletop like so, tucking the toes under, hovering the knees off the ground one inch, and then walking forward to the dumbbell, keeping the knees off the ground, row, row, and walking back. So if you have injuries with your shoulders or your upper body is not that strong, that might not be a good version for you, in which case, simply crawl, <laughs> okay? That's actually still a very good exercise for you, especially going backwards, yeah? We don't get a lot of training going backwards um, in our daily lives, so it's good to practice that as well. Okay, so we're going to do nine more of those total, uh, or eight more of those total, so 10 total, okay? Ready, here's eight, counting down and row. You want to keep the hips very level when you row, whether you're having your knees on the ground or not. Here's seven. And you could always do the bear crawl, bear crawl up, bear walk up, whatever you want to call it, and then drop your knees for the rows part if that works better for you. And then over time, perhaps just build up to different progressions. This is number six. Don't worry, I'm not going to lose count on this one. <laughs> and number five. Good. We have four more. This is probably one of the more difficult exercises in today's workout. So if you feel like it's a little bit of a struggle, don't worry. <laughs> it's not. It's not going to get worse from here. Good. Walking backwards. Just checking to sure, make sure the, your seat doesn't start coming up as you get more tired. Two more. And row. And row. Coming on back. And last one. Row and row, and come on back. Great work. You survived that. Excellent. <laughs> okay. All right, the next one gives us a little break for our arms, since we just used them quite a bit for that bear walk. Okay, so we're going to do bridges, and you'll remember, hopefully from last time, we did these marches last time, yeah? Today we're going to take that theme of adding instability a step further. Okay, so you can always do the one with the marching if this is not, um, if you're not quite feeling ready for this version we're doing today yet. So you're gonna come up onto a bridge and then lift one leg straight up. Keep the hips totally level. Your arms can be a little further apart just to help brace you if you want. And then bring that legs to your side diagonally. Oh, sorry, straight out to the side, but you're not going to probably get too far down. And then exhale, lift the leg back up. So 10 on each side, okay? Coming down, nine, exhale up. And eight, seven, six, five. Abs and glutes are engaged. Four, here's three, and two, really good control, and last one, very good. Okay, switch, hips stay off the ground, glutes are engaged, and then the left leg is going to go out to the side, and then up. Good, ten on this side, exhale up. So a lot of people have, um, Ten, can have different levels of stability on each side of their body. So one leg might be a lot more difficult to stabilize than the other side. So see if you can observe that about your body as you're doing this. Two more. And last one. Great work. Okay, lower the leg, lower the hips. All right. So next we have rotating elbow planks. Um, this isn't as cardio intensive as the bear walk, but it's also a little bit challenging. Um, if you feel like your shoulder is not going to be able to bear the weight of this, 
Uh, you can also always just do a knee plank and then hold like that. You could try to do it, the version on your knees, but I think it might be too irritating for the IT band and stuff to swivel. Um, I'll show you the full version so you know what I mean. Okay, so you're going to stack your forearms on top of each other like this, hands and fists, and that's what they're gonna look like on the ground here, okay? And then you're going to come into a plank, and from here, you're gonna open up your left arm and come into a side plank while on the sides of your feet. Yeah, so you have a lot of surface area on the ground there. And then you're gonna come back to your middle plank and then switch. So we're gonna do 10 on each side. Again, if you wanna just hold a regular plank while we're doing this, totally fine. Yeah. Good. One more. And four. Here's five. And five. Good. And just make sure your hips don't sag towards the ground. They're lifted. Six. And six. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. And ten and 10. Great, lower the knees. Child's pose as a little reward here. Great. Okay, so the next two exercises you don't really need your mat for. I'm going to move mine aside for the moment so that we can, I can demonstrate. So the next exercise, if you have yoga blocks and those two towels or sliders, we'll use them now. We're doing reverse plank into, um, uh, into pikes. Okay, I'll demonstrate what it looks like and then I'll offer some alternatives if we need that. Okay, so if you have these, um, the fabric side goes onto the hardwood and the plastic side would be appropriate for on carpet or um, a fabric surface. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Reverse plank, and then coming into a pike. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so um, if this is not great for you, I would suggest something like using your dumbbells, or maybe not even using the dumbbells, and doing some um, shoulder lifts like this. Yeah, you could use the dumbbells, but I think five pounds would be too heavy, which is what I have there. Maybe like three pounds, and you could just switch legs or switch arms halfway through. Okay, if you're doing this full version of this with me, we're going to do 10 total, so 10 from here. All right, coming into a plank, reverse plank, and exhale into your pike. Here's two, and exhale, three, and exhale, make sure that you're using your glutes, four, and exhale, and the whole posterior chain as you come into that reverse plank. Here's six and seven. And of course you're using your abs to do this pike. Eight and nine. Good, last one, 10. Ah, nicely done. Okay, let's clear these things out of the way if you have them. Okay. Next, we're going to come over to the wall, and if you have one of these loop bands, let's grab that. Okay, so we're gonna do a wall sit. Everyone who's worked with me before knew that was happening when I said, make sure there's a wall near you. Okay, everyone loves a good wall sit, right? <laughs> um, I have you muted so you can't say anything. <laughs> All right, so let's put the band on your lower thighs above the knees, okay? And you're just going to put constant pressure outwards on it so that your knees are about hip width distance apart. And we're gonna come into a wall sit here. If you tend to have knee problems, you can go a little higher up like this, but make sure the weight is in your heel um, and not into your, pushing into your toes because that creates some shear at the knee. So ideally you would be coming into a 90 degree um, angle with the knees and then also with the hips 
as you press the heels into the ground, you should feel your glutes activate. Same thing with the band you're pressing. And then now to add the arms, you're gonna reach up and then down for 10. Nice and slow, nine, good, eight, uh-huh, seven, good, six, and five. This is for shoulder mobility while we work on all this other stuff for the lower body. Four, and three, good, relax the shoulders if they start tightening up, two, and last one. Great work. Okay, come on up. And you can take this band off. And that concludes the muscle activation and strengthening part of our workout. Now we're moving on to the second part of our mobility exercises for today. So now that our bodies are all warmed up and we've activated and strengthened a bunch of different muscles, we can do a couple of more, a few more advanced stretches and mobility exercises. Okay, just four of them right now. Okay, so the, for the first one, we're going to do a side lunge. Again, if you have yoga blocks, it can be helpful. I'll demonstrate with them. So you're going to come into a side lunge where your left knee is at a right angle and then your um, right leg is straight out. Make sure you're not hyperextending that knee. There is a slight bend to it. Uh -huh. And then you should feel this as a stretch for the inner thighs and for the hamstring. Yeah. Three breaths on each side. Great. Okay, and then you're gonna shift your weight and then come onto the other side. Good, three breaths on this side too. So for people who have really tight hamstrings and adductors, inner thighs, um, this will be very difficult at the beginning of a workout, but since we're all warmed up, it should be easier now. Okay, same thing within the second mobility exercise. So again, we're gonna come into a low lunge. I'm using these trusty blocks. Okay, and just briefly here, and I may have done this in another video before, but you're gonna float the back foot up if you can and then grab a hold of it. So you're multitasking a hip flexor stretch with a quad stretch. So if that's too much, you just do your hip flexor stretch and do your quad stretch separately. Yeah. Good, three breaths on this side and we'll change to the other side. Oh, that's right, so there's an option. If you can't quite get a hold of that foot, let me show you on this side. If you have a yoga strap, you can use that to catch that foot. So this is a good option to know in case you want to do it. Okay, so what you would want to do is thread that foot into the loop of your yoga strap and have that around the back foot, all right? And the opposite hand would be holding onto that. Okay, and then you could just kind of fish that foot towards you using that strap, okay? So three breaths on this side. Great, okay, we can come on out of that. The next stretch is for our glutes, and it is a little bit more advanced as well than the figures four stretch that we've done quite a lot in this um, class. So if this is too much for your knees, too much pressure on your knees, or if, it's, um, if your hips are too tight to do this, then go ahead and just do a figure four stretch instead, okay? But if you wanna try this version, you're gonna have um, both knees stacked on top of each other. Feet are flexed to protect your knee joint from a lateral standpoint. Yeah, because there can be a lot of sideways pressure um, if your hips are too tight for this one, okay? So sitting up nice and tall on the sits bones, knees are stacked, and on the exhale, just gently fold forward. Three breaths here as well. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Ideally, you're keeping contact between your sits bones and the mat here and not letting them float off. Great, and I will do the other side, um, but facing sideways so you can see what that looks like. Okay, inhaling upright on your sits bones and then, oh, flex the feet, sorry, I forgot to do that. Flex the feet and then exhale, forward fold. Just relax. Try not to hold any tension in your shoulders or these upper traps here. 
kind of get a little overworked. Good. And come on up. Okay, and finally we have the fish pose. And this one, if you don't have a yoga block and a Pilates ball, you could just use a cushion. I'll demonstrate that first since I don't think everyone has these, okay? So, actually what a full fish pose looks like, you've probably seen this before, is like this, yeah, like this. But that can be a lot on folks' necks if you're not used to doing that. So if you don't have these things, go ahead and take a cushion and then place it underneath your shoulder blades and then you can tilt your head up and that opens the throat chakra as well, yeah. So that's just an easier version of that if you are equipment constrained. Otherwise, if you have these, you're going to lay down with the Pilates ball between your shoulder blades and you're gonna carefully aim yourself so that your head ends up on the yoga block. Yeah, so it's a lot less of that back bend than what I demonstrated for the full version of fish pose. And just make sure that ball is centered under your spine. And you can just relax here. So having this slight elevation of the ball here helps to open the chest and the front of the shoulders, which tend to get really tight, right, with our current lifestyles in front of computers and pianos. <laughs> so just let that open up and let gravity help you stretch that. We'll just take five breaths here. This is basically the end of our workout, so congratulations. <laughs> you can inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Okay, great work today, everyone. So now we're going to move into some breathing and I will be sharing um, a piece by Schubert today. And uh, you can feel free to, you know, since we don't have our chair with us today, you could feel free to do go into Shavasana for um, during this breathing period, this meditation period, if you want, you just lay on your back, palms facing up, um, that helps to open the shoulders and chest, and then your legs can flop out. If that feels too much, um, like it's too much pressure for your lower back, you can always put a cushion underneath your knees, and that could help as well. Okay, so just make yourself comfortable and start to deepen your breathing and relax as I set up for the music. Thank you. 
Thank you.